In this viscast, we're asked to consider the motion of two blocks connected by a cord. Pause the video now and read through the question. Now that you've read through the question, hopefully you have some idea. It's about two blocks that are connected by a cord. One block is horizontal, the other block is on a frictionless inclined plane at an angle of 30 degrees. What we're asked to find is the tension in the cord which connects the two blocks and the magnitude of the acceleration of the two blocks. So a good starting point here is to draw a diagram. We know that block B has a mass of 2 kilograms and it rests on a horizontal plane and this horizontal plane is not frictionless it has a coefficient of friction that's 0.5 importantly it's kinetic friction that means the block is sliding it's in motion secondly there's an incline of 30 degrees and there's a second block which rests on that incline that's block A its mass is 4 kilograms. These two blocks are connected by a cord which runs over a pulley which changes the direction of the cord but that's all it does. So this must be one of those massless frictionless pulleys. The tension that's connecting to block A is the same as the tension which is connecting to block B. So we're asked to find that tension and secondly find the acceleration of the block if we look at that, hopefully you realise this is a frictionless surface, so mu is equal to zero, that block A is going to slide to the left, so I'm expecting my acceleration to be in this direction here. So block A accelerates down the slope, and block B accelerates in the horizontal direction. So it's a Newton's second law problem, free body diagrams, resolve the components, apply Newton's second law, solve for the tension, solve for the acceleration. So start off with a free body diagram for Block B, this is 2 kilograms. What are the forces directing on block B? Well, we have the tension force, which acts horizontally. We'll call that T. We also have the weight force acting down. Now I'm going to do this symbolically for the moment. So mass B times gravity. We have the normal force, which acts upwards. We know the normal force must balance the weight force. because There's no vertical acceleration. And this is a friction surface. So we have a force due to friction here. You know that force due to friction is equal to minus coefficient of friction times the normal force. The minus sign just tells us the direction here. Since I'm making it minus mu kn, it also means I've automatically chosen this direction across to the left as being positive. So that's my positive x direction. For the diagram of mass b. Now one of the things that we're free to do is for our second object, mass a, we can choose a different coordinate system. I'm going to choose a coordinate system that goes down the slope. Remember a good choice of coordinate system if you've got some motion is to have one of the axes along the direction of the net force. In the diagram for B the net force is horizontal. In the diagram for A the net force is down the slope. Let's put in some forces now. We have the tension which acts in the negative x direction. We have the normal force which is perpendicular to the surface there. We have the weight force which acts down towards the centre of the earth, ma times g, and this is a frictionless surface, so there's no other forces acting on the object. So now that we've got our two free body diagrams, we can also look at resolving the forces, so we have the components of the, of the forces. In diagram for the object B, all of those forces happen to be in either my x or y direction, so there are no components to look at there. However, in my diagram for A, I've noticed that the weight force has a component which acts down the slope and a component which acts perpendicular to the slope. In this case here, I'm only going to be interested in the forces which act down the slope, so I really want this component which acts down the slope. How do I get that? I have to reconcile what angle um, is 30 degrees in this triangle. Is it this angle here or is it this angle here? The way I like to look at that is if I was to tilt my slope so that theta was equal to zero, that is it would be horizontal, then this component here would have to line up with mg. So this angle here must be theta and my component of weight which is down the slope is going to be ma times g times the opposite, so it's going to be sine of theta. Now that I've resolved my components, I can now turn to doing the evaluation stage. This is my development stage. 
evaluation is using Newton's second law. So let's remind ourselves the net force. And we want to look at the net force component. So let's look at the net force components. They're both x components. Let's look for object B. The net force in the horizontal direction is equal to the tension force, it's positive to the, the left, and then minus mu k n is the force which goes to the right. That's my net force. That has to be equal to the mass of my object B times its acceleration. Uh, we should also put in bits of information that we know, such as the normal force there is actually given by um, is equal to the weight force in this case because the object's motion is horizontal. So the normal force is given by mass mb times gravity, and it's equal to mba. We have another equation for object A here, looking once again at the net force in the x direction. We have uh, down the slope is equal to the component of the weight down the slope, which is ma times g times sine theta minus the tension force up the slope. That must be equal to the mass of object A times its acceleration. Now at this point, we have two equations and we have two unknowns. We don't know the tension force and we don't know the acceleration. What we do know though is the tension force T is the same and we know that the acceleration A is the same in both equations. So what we can use is use one of those equations to eliminate the other. So what I'm going to do is take this equation here and if I divide both sides by the mass of B, I can substitute that left-hand side for A. So rewriting my second equation, Mi times G times sine theta minus the tension is equal to Ma multiplied by, now, what is this left-hand side of equation 1? It's tension minus mu k mb times g. I have to divide that whole thing by the mass of the block B. That, that term in brackets is just the term for the acceleration here, given by the equation that I've starred. And what I'm doing here is I've eliminated A, so I can just solve for the tension. So once again, we can go through and try and simplify this a little bit. Let's gather all the terms with T on one side of the equation and everything else on the other side. So on this side I can write mass of object A times G times sine theta. To get this minus T across the right hand side I have to add T, so plus T is on that side. The term which doesn't have a T on the right hand side of the equation is going to be MA times minus mu k mbg divided by mb, so the mbs are going to cancel top and bottom for that term. And since it's negative, I need to add it to the other side to make it positive, to bring it across. So plus, we've got ma times mu k times g. Once again, the mb doesn't appear here because I've got mb on the top and mb on the bottom. So that's the terms that don't have t on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, uh, what has T here? We've got this term here, MA times T divided by MB. Trying to solve for T here, once again, we can take T out as a common factor. We have MA over MB plus 1. Often a good idea is to multiply through to check. So if I take that T and times by MA over MB, I get the first term. T times 1 is T, that's the second term. That then has to equal, I've got a couple of terms here which are common, so I've got MA out the front and G out the front which is common, and I've got sine theta here plus UK. And then finally, rearranging that equation for T, I've now got T is equal to MA times G times sine of theta plus UK divided by what's in brackets there, the MA over MB plus 1. So at this point, I can put numbers into my equation to try and evaluate what my tension should be. If you do that on your calculator, you will find we get 13.06 newtons or 13 newtons as my tension force. Tension is 13 newtons. What about the acceleration? Well, to solve the acceleration, we can go back to this equation here, or this equation here, and we can substitute what we know for our tension force, and then find out what the acceleration is.
I might just use this equation here to see that the acceleration is in the ball at tension minus mu k mb g all divided by the mass of b or if you like the tension divided by the mass of block b minus mu k times g. If we take those knowns put them in our calculator we get that the acceleration is equal to 1.6 meters per second squared. Now remember the next part that's always important is the assessment part. So we've got the I, D, E, we need now an A. Let's assess the situation. Is that reasonable? First of all, the acceleration is positive, which is great. We expect it to be in a positive x direction. It has the right units, tension divided by a mass. It's a force divided by a mass as an acceleration. And UK is a dimensionless parameter, so G also has the units of acceleration. So that's good too. We can check that value of A a second time by using this expression here as well. And if you do that, you'll also find that the acceleration is 1.6 meters per second squared.